Hi, my name is Mark and I welcome you back to Element 14 Presents. Today we're going to build a network monitor for two reasons. Number one is I always build uh, projects with microcontrollers that have onboard Wi-Fi. And at some point I really do need to know the IP address that is, that is assigned by my router. I need that IP address to access the microcontroller for several reasons. And there is unfortunately no quick way of getting that IP address without hooking it up to a computer, a serial monitor in that case, or uh, some other tool. Reason number two is kits. Uh, if you have a kit, then you know uh, at some point when friends come over to play, they say hello and the first question you get is, can I have the Wi-Fi password please? And because they say please, I'll give it, no problem. But I do like to know who accesses my network. In case of trouble in the end, I really would like to know who was on the network so maybe I can uh, go from there. So that's another good reason to build what I'm building today. So two good reasons to build a network monitor. Let's get started. So the goals I set out for this project are, uh, are a few. First of all, I want to create a device that's uh, quick and easy to use. And I want it to message me whenever somebody access my network by sending me a message on Telegram. And since the device itself uses Wi-Fi, I want to be able to configure it without uh, having to reprogram it. That being said, I might also include a web browser program uh, so you can program it using your web browser. Uh, without having the need to compile it in Arduino or whatever uh, software you're using for that. Of course, that's optional. If you do want to change the firmware, of course, you need to recompile it. Let's start building. Yeah, we're moving right on to software. Did I miss hardware? No, not really. But the hardware is only a few that I'm not going to mention it separately. Because all you need is an ESP32, a power cable, and of course, a power adapter. All you need to do is hook it up to your computer, start uh, your compiler, load the software and, and go from there. Because other than the microcontroller, really, there is no hardware involved. So regarding the software, we'll go there now. So the Arduino sketch is made up completely of one file called IP Sniffer. I will tell you all about the functions in the sketch in a minute, but first let me tell you what you need to do to be able to compile the sketch at all. Well, first we need to make sure you have the ESP32 library installed. For that, you go to Preferences, you click on this icon and you make sure this top line is added in this box and then you press OK. This will tell Arduino to find the appropriate boards that we need and we need to install those boards first and we do that by going through the board manager. Yeah, board, board manager. And once you enter that link, you get to type ESP32 right in this box. And at the moment, Arduino shows two libraries and you will be needing the Espressive Systems library, this one. You need to install it. I installed version 106 because I know that this one is stable and working properly. Then of course you need to select your board. We do that here, select board, I'm using the ESP32 do it kit dev kit version 1. You select the one you're using. You also need to select the right COM port, which you can do here, and then you can press compile. But you probably will have to install some libraries first. We need all these libraries. Um, some of those are included in the ESP32 framework we just installed, the board manager, but basically the one who have a link behind it are the libraries we need to install. And you can install the library by going to the library manager. You type uh, the libraries you need. For example, we will be needing the Arduino JSON. And you can see I'm using version 6.19.1. So let's find that one. Arduino Johnson 6.19.1. It's here. This one. And you press install. And you do that for all the libraries you need. If you cannot find it, you might have to install it by downloading the appropriate zip file. The links are here. You click it, you download the zip file, and then you can install a zip file, here, include libraries at zip file, and then it, you will be able to install it. After that all is done, you can press compile and, and upload. So let me uh, talk you through the sketch first. I'm not going to go through each and every function. Instead, I put a summary in the header 
a summary of all the functions I'm using and I'll tell you all about it. First we have our setup function which basically initializes the ESP32 and it does some stuff that I only wanted to do once doing startup. And of course we have our main loop which is actually the continuously running program and that does two things that I will tell you about in a minute. Then we, hear, we have some stuff that we need to be able to store and retrieve data in the internal memory, in the long-term storage memory, and we're using a Smith table for that. We have our network monitoring, which is actually what this is all about. We have a UDP setup function, which basically sets up a service to monitor for incoming traffic UDP packages on the network. And then we have a parse packet function to pick apart that UDP message and get all the information we need from it. We also have a function to uh, nicely print IP addresses because the UDP info I'm getting is only numbers and I like it visualized with a nice dot in between like we used to from IP numbers. So that's what this function does. And we have a, a function to handle incoming messages from Telegram because uh, you can send uh, telegrams to the microcontroller and you can ask for help by typing help uh, and you will get a summary of its function. Uh, you can type mute, that will mute all the incoming messages, at least on the telegram side. And you can unmute if ever you give the mute command. So I'm not going to go, go through every detail again, but this one is important. There's a switch input on pin 13 and you might want to change that, that's up to you. And basically what it does, you can force the ESP to go to the configuration mode, to the Wi-Fi manager, so you can adjust the settings there, like the Wi-Fi you're using or the token from Telegram, etc. You can change that there. And you can do so by grounding pin 13. So you put a wire between ground and pin 13, while booting up the device and it will automatically go to the configuration mode. And then let me tell you about the, the setup because the first line in setup is important. It initializes the serial port because all the data I send out to Telegram is also sent out on the serial port. So you can use your serial monitor to, to see what's going on there if you set it to this baud rate. Um, and then I said I will tell you about the main function. Main function basically does two things. It checks if a flag is set to see if any UDP messages came by that needs uh, to be dealt with to get the information and send it out on Telegram. And of course, the second thing it does, it is monitoring for incoming messages from Telegram in case I send a message like mute, unmute or help. Basically, that's it. If you want to have more detail on how every function works, you can go through it. I put uh, comments in the, in the functions and you can see what's going on there but it's not necessary to replicate this unit. And that's all there is to it. Do you like winning free stuff? Are you an electronics hobbyist? Do you like building cool projects and winning prizes for what you build? The Element 14 community presents Project 14, the member-driven destination where you decide on the challenge. You enter projects to win monthly prizes and you vote on the winners. What are you waiting for? Join the Element 14 community so you too can enter one of our contests or submit an idea for your own. Join now! So another amazing feature of the ESP32 is web browser programming. All you need to do is connect your ESP to your computer, go to the web browser, enter the address and start programming. Unfortunately, this only works with Chrome and Edge, or at least I tested it with those and it doesn't work with Firefox. So take Chrome or Edge and go to the following website. We'll put the link below and then connect your microcontroller, your ESP32. Press install and follow the instructions. And it will start programming. That's all there is to it. No need to worry about compiling Arduino, all those things. You just hook it up to your computer, start programming and you're good to go. And your project is ready and done. Here we go. And that's all there is to it. Okay, time to set up the Telegram bot. For that, you install Telegram on your phone or a computer. And first thing you do is you find Botfather. And in Botfather, you type a new bot. And that allows you to set up a, a bot. And it will ask you to create a unique bot name and a unique username. And then that's uh, what you need to remember. 
copy the, the key you will get after creating the bot you will get a uh, token key that you will need uh, in the setup for the ESP you also need your user ID for user ID you go back to the search and you type ID bot and in ID bot you type slash get ID and it will give you your ID code. I'm not going to show you because that's quite uh, personal. Make sure you do it on your system and copy that uh, number as well because you need the token number and your user ID number and you have to enter it in the setup uh, for the Wi-Fi manager later. So I love the Wi-Fi manager. It allows me to reconfigure my network settings without having to compile and upload a new sketch to Arduino. So how easy is that? You just boot into the Wi-Fi manager, enter your Wi-Fi credentials, and that's all there is to it. So to boot this one up, the first time ever, uh, it will go to the Wi-Fi configuration mode. You can also force it to go there in case you use an, an, a recycled Arduino and you already configured Wi-Fi in the past, and you can just uh, force it to go there by grounding pin 13. And a Wi-Fi point will be created. There we have it, element 14. So we'll connect to element 14 connect the password is password and then it will take you to the configuration side and you simply click configure Wi-Fi and then you'll have to enter your Wi-Fi credentials and you have to enter your telegram token your ID number that you saved earlier you press save and you're good to go saving credentials now we just wait for it to reboot and see what happens maybe you take your device to the, to the neighbor or whatever and you need to switch network, you don't need to reprogram it. You can just use the Wi-Fi manager, enter your credentials and get started. Now all the programming is done. I programmed the ESP32, I arranged the bot on the bot father and I entered the credentials in the Wi-Fi manager. So we're good to go. Let's start this thing up and see what happens. If all is well, I'll get a message on Telegram. There we have it. We get a pop-up, element 14 network monitor started. Type help for help. So let's do that, type help. And there you get a little info. You can type mute, you can type unmute. If I type mute, all the incoming messages will be muted, of course, and unmute will undo that again. Now, if somebody enters the network, now you can see IP address, MAC address, and if available, you will see device name, but on my cell phone, that's shielded. So it all depends on the, the device that is accessing the network. And that's all it does. And every now and then you'll get a new pop-up from somebody accessing your network. There we have another one. Yep, that's iPhone 2. So that's all there is to it. So this is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have an idea or suggestion on how I can use this uh, network monitor in a different way, please uh, let me know in the comments. Maybe we'll pick up some ideas for a, a future project, who knows. I already used this Telegram bot uh, in a different project called You've Got Mail. We'll put the link down below. And there was a project I did where uh, each time somebody uh, drops a package in my mailbox, I get a photo of the, the package that was just dropped. And it's uh, very useful. I'm still using it today. That project, this project, and many other products you can find on the Element 14 uh, Presents community page. We'll put the link below. And like always, I see you next time.